Hi humans! In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my 1890s waistcoat. I started by drafting a pattern based on the Keystone Jacket and Dress Cutter, which is a pattern making guide published in 1895. You can find the free PDF version of this book online, which is what I used. Hi, this is um frustrating. The back armhole curve, they like tell you to draft before telling you where all the points you need to draft it are. Um, and now they're telling me to find the front shoulder point. By measuring from this point over here, one inch in front of it, I know which way in front is. I would assume this way up to here, which puts my shoulder point like way above my paper. And they're drafting with the same measurements that I'm drafting with. And theirs is on this top line. So I'm confused. Uh, I don't really know what to do. I think I'm going to ignore it and keep going and just do what the picture shows and not what the words say. They already placed E and now they're saying that E Apply the front length from one inch in front of J at waist, one inch in front of J at waist, up to line E, less the width of the top of the back. Oh, minus the width of the top of the back. What's the width of the top of the back? Maybe it's this. Okay, so if I say minus this, is this making more sense? Minus this. So this is an inch and three quarters, a little bit of an inch and three quarters. So we have 18 and a quarter minus an inch and three quarters. So an inch in front of J to E should be 16 and a half. That still doesn't quite work. I have about 16 if I go towards the front of the garment as the front of J at waist, up to line E, less the width of the top of the back, and locate E by the measure, whether it goes above or below the top line. In this case, it falls on the top line. So, if I do what they say, it goes above, but I'm drafting the measurements that they're using, so it should be on? It's not. Okay, I'm gonna pretend it is then. Next. Sometimes when they say half of something, like half of the waist measurement, what they really mean is a quarter because you're, draft you're drafting for the half body. So sometimes they include that in their math and sometimes they don't. So looking at this pattern, I pretty much am done drafting it. I haven't done the collar at all yet. I went and took my measuring tape and just measured across the waist and the bust to see how close they match to what I think I need for this. Some of them are pretty off, so the waist needs to get bigger, so I think I'm going to make these darts a little bit narrower. There's also supposed to be a dart here, um, as you can see, but I did not add that because I don't have enough room yet. So I might try to take out enough here that I can have that dart. I took in each side of both of the darts about a quarter of an inch, which allowed me to add this back dart in, and then this is the waist measurement I think that I'm looking for. It might need to be a tiny bit bigger. I also didn't measure about a quarter or three eighths of an inch in front for the little like overlap. So I'm a little bit confused about this collar. I was looking, there's also all of these collars that I would have to have a neckline and then it would be a separate collar that gets pieced on. You're supposed to have the canvas cut on the diagonal, which you can't really do if you're doing the entire piece. So I feel like I should do it separate, but also like there are types of collars where you have that center back seam, like a shawl collar and a one piece collar. I'm thinking I will do a separate collar because I know that the pad stitching for that is more complicated. And even if it's not something that would normally happen for this garment, it is something that would definitely happen for like a jacket. So it would be good practice. I figured out, or I read the book, I read the words, and they said the difference between 63 and 64, that curve of the break line, helps to have the collar have more space when it's folded down. So like if you imagine a straight strip folded in half, the outside edge is going to be the same length as the inside edge, but when you curve it like that, there's more room. So if you're doing like a big wide collar or a collar that has, maybe I can show you. On this collar, for example, it goes down like past just where the neck would be, so it has to kind of have a longer edge so that it can come out a little bit. I added a tiny bit of a belly to the front of the lapel here just so that it will look straight because that's something that I've learned in the last month of binge watching menswear videos and learning about jackets and such that to look straight, this lapel needs to have a slight curve. Like, sometimes they cut lapels with a really big curve, and then it looks curved, but if it has just a slight curve, then it will look straight. If it's cut straight, then it kind of looks like it's almost curving out. So, that's a thing. Here's my full pattern. I'm 
going to make my mock-up out of this red canvas. Up. I did not add the collar yet because I think there needs I need to make adjustments to the neckline So I thought it would be kind of pointless to fit the collar without the neckline fitting. It is a little bit tight I'm wondering I should probably cut this to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance in the shoulder Just so that it gives more of an accurate representation because right now this is cutting in But I know that is more fabric than is actually going to be there. It's the next day This fits pretty well in the waist if I pull it snug, but I think actually these darts, because I just ladder stitched them, if I pull on it, you get a little bit of gapping. So I do think I need to add about a half to maybe three quarters of an inch right here at the waist. The bust actually fits really well. Um, it might even overlap too much. No, I think because I did leave seam allowance here, I think the bust is perfect and the waist just needs another maybe half an inch to really close. It's hard to tell. Usually with fitting, if it's not immediately obvious what to do, or even if it is, I like to take a video with my phone so that I can really just see all the angles and see it objectively because just looking in the mirror I'll often just like try to smooth things out or change my posture or change the way it's laying so it looks good rather than just see it for what it is and alter it that way. I have this pinned even right away. I can tell that there's way too much spring that I added in the front. Um, right here, even though I cut this to an eighth of an inch seam allowance, which means that the edge can stretch probably enough to be to the seam line, this is still cutting into my arms when I bring them forward. Victorian piecing was kind of made to make you have to have this really upright posture and like really stick out your chest, which my posture already does naturally more than most people, but to be relaxed and to be able to work in front of me, this needs to come down. It's only comfortable if I'm like doing this. These are my pieces. Here's my pattern. It's been altered. I brought out the side of the waist. Um, so now instead of like matching my waist measurement plus a placket, I have it about almost an inch larger, which I think is good because I would like to be able to wear sweaters underneath it too. I made the back shoulder both less steep and I made it wider and a little bit deeper. So that makes the collar longer. I think is also really good because when I was originally looking at my collar piece and putting it up to some of these collars that I know fit me, it was way too short. Of course it got longer just proportionally to this. I had to redraft the collar, just, you know, draw the roll line, which I'm learning how to do and it's amazing and I hope that this is right. I did what the Keystone Guide said for number 64 which you can't see which is put three quarters of an inch here and then have an inch there and this is curved an inch away from a straight roll line at the top and then I go out an inch and a quarter from here to there and this just gets curved in. The front darts have been straightened out here and then I did add a little bit more hip spring in the back and also in the side front. edges to between a quarter and an eighth of an inch so I can get an idea of where the actual edge will be. I made it too big, I think. This fabric is really wishy-washy, like even though it's a, I think just a plain woven cotton, there's a lot of give in it, which sucks. Um, and I probably should have picked a different fabric for this mock-up. But as you can see there, there is like room, which might also be because I like released some space in the back. I accidentally put the collar on inside out. I did put the seam inside like all of the other seams which are now outside because to kind of show where the collar will be folding, the seam kind of needs to be on the inside. So I put it this way so I can look at the collar and I'm actually really happy about it. It looks really good and by really good I mean decent which is the best we could hope for. There is too much room here now so I'm wondering if I want to take it out of the center front, or if I want to take it out of the side equally both front and back, or if I want to take it out just front or just back. Fullness can come out of somewhere, but I think where it comes out of will change other things. Looking at the few pictures of extant garments that I could find, they all had one thing in common, which was that the darts never went out. 
for waistcoats, they always just go in and keep going in. So if I center where the point is now on my body and pull this so the fabric is flat, the darts kind of go in and then they go straight down. So I think I need to change that. The darts need to be going in and continuing that inward line. I might just be able to fix that by cutting off part of the center front here. Yeah, so that looks good in that these darts go in and kind of continue going in. It's not quite a straight line, depending on how you look at it, it can be a little bit curved this way. Because of this dart shape and wanting to keep the width up here between the top of the middle darts, I th I'm thinking that the width needs to come out elsewhere. I think I also need to carve out the neck a little bit more because this collar is like up in my neck and I think I have kind of a chunky neck. Really, I need to look at my fitting videos, so um, I should probably go do that and get back to you. Hello, we are back. I think I'm pretty much done with this. I ended up having to shorten the front and the back, although the back is shortened mostly from the center back, which is helping to take out some of those um, like horizontal wrinkles that were happening. Right here, I still need to take out a little bit. It turns out I really don't need this to come out much at all in the back because I do have a really straight lower back in my posture. If you can see that right there, I don't have much of a of an arch in my lower back. This little curve um, is completely unnecessary, so that can come out. But other than that, with that taken out of the back, um, I altered these darts a little bit so they would be straighter. Um, this, I'm crossing it a little bit more, so I'm going to cut off here and reshape. I just need to redraft the collar, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure every time I make alterations to the neckline, the collar does need to be redrafted. Here is my new roll line. It goes down quite a bit farther than the original roll line. Um, but then here it is pretty close because I wanted to keep what the Keystone Guide said, which was three quarters of an inch here, which I know is just a standard measurement and therefore doesn't super apply because standard measurements, I feel like, never apply to different size bodies. But that does mean it is supposed to be around three quarters of an inch. So the fabric that I'm using for this project, wait, I can go get it, is this fabric. I have this flannel fabric. I think someone gave it to me in like a random box of holiday fabric. here on the floor and well, I was thinking about what seams can just kind of happen first on each piece individually which would be the center back seam, the back darts, and two front darts on each piece, on each front piece. Also if you are wondering about this back piece and why I cut it as one instead of two, I actually I did lay it out as two pieces, I just put it really close to the fold so there will be a seam there in the center back but the seam allowance is just very short, so I chose not to cut it. I also have the collar here. I cut the canvas on the bias and pieced the center back, and then the under collar is also cut on the bias, and I also pieced the center back, and this is just a normal seam pressed open. After debating for a little while, I decided to cut these open and press them flat, which I already did on the other side, so I will do that on this side now. So I decided to use the modern, completely not historically accurate, technique of putting a triangle of fusible interfacing, I know, um, over 
the corners and I thought that this fabric would be more prone to fraying than it is so I actually think I could just leave this and it would be fine but I wanted to have that little extra bit of security on the darts just because there's so little fabric right next to that stitching so I am putting a little a little triangle of fusible interfacing in place so there's that one Okay, I just wanted to point out that it already makes this incredibly gorgeous shape. This is just the darts. Okay, y'all. I'm re-watching Bernadette Banner's actual tailor explains pad stitching for perfect collars and lapels. From what I've seen in this video and other videos, pretty much universal is to have some kind of reinforcement along the row line, whether it's a single row of stitching, whether it's a tape that you stitch down by hand or by machine. You can do a machine straight stitch, or a hand running stitch, or a hand back stitch. So I was looking at pad stitching tutorials. They all do different patterns of pad stitching. So this is the stand part here, the part I haven't drawn on, which is going to be next to the neck, and then the rest of the collar is going to come around kind of like that. Some people will pad stitch rows this way, all the way across. Some people will pad stitch like that, and then for the ends, they'll pad stitch more this way, which helps roll the collar back. Some people will pad stitch diagonally this way, which gives you the roll this way, and then once you get to the end, you're still rolling it this way. I'm going to go with the diagonally this way. I tried to draw out lines because this canvas is not really meant for collars. As you can see, I drew my lines the wrong diagonal originally, so I had to draw more lines. They're definitely not perfect, but I think it'll be okay. Okay, my plan is to hold it in my hand like this and roll it this way and go from the center out on each side. I don't know how to start this. What if I just do a tiny little back stitch? Is that okay? This goes through. It's supposed to catch one or two threads of the outer fabric, but not show. Okay, let's try again. Here and here. Okay, and then we go, maybe I'm not, I'm, this is hard, okay? Wait, I'm not rolling it. Time to explain what pad stitching is. So pad stitching is basically this stitch right here. My example looks sort of decent um, for just that little tiny middle part. It's a stitch where you move vertically, but the actual stitch happens horizontally, and it's used to connect two pieces of fabric, like these two, the canvas and the outer fabric, and it's used to shape. So by sewing the fabric together, pretty much, you're essentially sewing the entire fabric together because there's a stitch every pretty much quarter of an inch in any direction you go on this fabric when it's, when it's done being pad stitched. So you're connecting every part of the top fabric to every part of the bottom fabric, but you're doing it in a curve. You're curving it over your finger while you stitch so that when you let go, and this is not really doing the thing yet, but let me like do some more stitching and then if it works then I can show you. Oh, would you look at that? It's curved. It's curved. We have achieved curvedness. Uh, I have succeeded! I've been pad stitching this collar and that's wrong, but the one thing that I have learned from this side, from this side to this side, is basically your stitch is a little Z. You go under the fabric and then it comes over the fabric down you go under the fabric, comes over the fabric, down. It's supposed to be a Z that fits perfectly into a square. You're supposed to go down the same amount that you went across, pretty much. My stitches are not that. Some of them are, but like definitely my first side of stitching is a very, very elongated Z. So that is something I need to work on. Also having your finger behind so that you can feel if you're just like because if you're stabbing straight into the fabric, then you're going to get a ton of the outer fabric, and you don't want that. So if you have your finger there, you can feel how much you're getting. Like, I got a ton that time. Yeah, that's like a whole eighth of an inch of thread on the outside. So yeah, definitely, 
definitely need to do this a lot more. Okay, so next I'm gonna do vertical rows like this. This is my pad stitched collar. I'm going to trim the canvas down to exactly the seam line. Because of the pad stitching that has now moved, so it's not where the lines are on this, I will have to like check underneath and cut it to the right place. The pad stitching that I put just on the inside of the roll line really helps give this shape and then the pad stitching here is not doing the most right now, but hopefully with some pressing. So I'm doing this shaping that I've seen people do where you do the first bit is straight and then you curve right around the back of the neck pretty much like as much as possible and then it straightens out again. I think I'm supposed to curve it as extremely as I can through the top, although I'm not sure. And then now I think I go through the bottom and I do pretty much the same thing, curving it this way. Look at that. I'm gonna flip it around so that I can do the other side. So then if we if we start to shape it, are you seeing this? That looks like a collar to me. I really don't know what I'm doing here, guys. I'm just trying to put the, the things together from the random internet sources that I've found. Oh wow, it really does not want to be flat now. I'm going to shape this front piece back so that it curls in towards the body. Hello, it is me in the mirror again. So I was doing research on lapels, on how you pad stitch a lapel. Generally, people will reinforce the roll line just on the inside, on the like chest side of the roll line, they will reinforce that with a strip of tailor's tape, which is kind of like twill tape, I think, but usually I think that it's not woven in that V pattern. It's woven kind of like straight flat grain. Um, flat grain? It's just, there's no twill, it's just tape. <laughs> um, but, so usually that is put on the lapel and sometimes around kind of the entire edge of where you're connecting the canvas to your outer fabric but I don't have any Taylor's tape right now, so I think I'm going to forego that for the roll line. Yeah, also if you were to be padding this at all, you would want to add the padding to your canvas before you start sewing it onto your actual fabric. How do I explain this? Here we go, so this is the inside of one of my front pieces, and this is the canvas that I cut out. Now if I was adding any padding to the bust or to above the bust, which can be done to help achieve that Victorian upper chest curve. Fun fact, my body is just kind of shaped like that. Like, most people have a curve that goes in here a little bit, and then they have their bust. Mine just kinda, I'm wearing black so this isn't showing, but yeah, my upper chest just kind of doesn't do that. Yay for me, I guess? But yeah, if you're going to add any padding, um, usually people have a larger piece of canvas if they're going to add padding. They have the canvas go all the way into the side seam here and then maybe curve like that or actually have a dart or two in the canvas that they would they would cut on the dart lines and then sew it onto a piece of tailor's tape on both sides and then like zigzag across it or cross stitch. But yeah, so if you do a dart in your canvas then you want to close that dart with a piece of tape. Since I'm not doing a full piece of canvas and I'm also not padding at all, I'm just going to be doing this. So I think the first step based. Hi, it's Editing Aura. I just wanted to make it clear that adding the padding to the canvas before you sew it on is something that I've seen in modern day tailoring, but I don't know that it's historically accurate. So do with that information what you will. Note for next time, on the lapel you do need extra seam allowance in the canvas because it will take that. So I've just kind of scooched over my roll line so that I have extra room um, and I'm going to end up trimming this down after. And then I have my roll line marked for my pattern on both of these pieces and I've just lined them up and now I'm going to pin and baste them in place. Mm -hmm.
supposed to be teeny tiny. Like, eighth of an inch square, which is a little smaller than I'm doing. I am doing this little, I didn't explain it very well before, but this little movement between each stitch where you roll the under fabric this way and the over fabric that way. You kind of do it, I think, like as much as you can without puckering the fabric. I mean, for when you need like this really aggressive roll. But yeah, I think that really helps to make sure that you are putting that curve into the fabric. This, for reference, is the stitching I did on the collar. So yeah, that's a big size difference. So this is starting to roll, which is amazing. And I have found that I'm doing less of the aggressively over the finger and more of the rolling with my fingers to achieve that, which is good to know. The soft roll of the lapel is a mark of hand tailoring that you definitely want to keep. I think if you're going to go through all the work of pad stitching things by hand and want people who know what good suits look like to see your work and say, I can tell that was done by hand um, in a good way. <laughs> I mean, if you do want a flat pressed lapel, it can still be helpful to pad stitch just to make sure that you don't have these like awkward corners coming up on your collar, which look really amateur, um, I know from experience. So yeah, you totally can pad stitch just to make sure that your like corners are going to stay nice and down, but I feel like if you're going to do it, you might as well like leave this just a little bit soft so that people look at that and if they know what they're looking at, they're like, oh, that's Someone put effort into that, and you can be like, yes, that person was me. Although, I don't know, I think it might be slightly different historically. Like, when you do look at historical waistcoats, some of them do have a pretty flat collar. Maybe it's partly up to personal preference. Okay, but, like, look at this from, from the front. It already, it, like, it wants to roll back, which is so glorious. So, I probably should have drawn lines because, as you can see, I'm like totally not following straight lines, but looking at past stitching videos on YouTube, um, there's definitely like a very wide variety of how neat people's pad stitching is, of like people who do it and aren't complete beginners like me, so that does make me feel better. There are some stitches that you can see on the back side. So some of my stitches are actually really good and you just see that pinprick, but then some of them you do see a small length of thread on the underside, so it needs to be worked on. To trim it, I'm gonna look at the underneath seam line. I went ahead and finished this edge off with a cross stitch, catching just like one or two threads of the outer fabric and then a few threads of the canvas. On the canvas side, it's only going through the canvas. The only connection to the outer fabric is just one or two threads on the outside of this cross stitch. Normally, this would be finished with a length of tailor's tape, which is just like a thin woven cotton tape, maybe sometimes linen, that would have been either cross stitch or filled slash slip stitch slash whip stitched on either side, one side to the outside and one side to the canvas. So you'd have your tape here kind of bridging that gap, covering this raw edge, and it would be stitched to either side. It is invisible on this side pretty much. If you look really closely, you can see the little pinpricks um, and kind of the edge of the canvas, but it's fairly invisible. There isn't any like obvious stitching, which is great. I think this is going to be functional. The lapel, I first, um, I pressed pretty much this entire piece and I pressed the pad stitching on the lapel flat, which it doesn't want to be flat, but I pressed it flat and then I pretty much just like shaped it into this shape. I didn't, uh, I didn't flat iron the bottom of this roll just because I don't think I want it flat. I want it to have that nice soft kind of hand tailored roll happening there. I think I'm going to sew the shoulder seams and sew the side seams. I'm actually unsure about these side seams, so I'm gonna baste them. First time trying this shell on, I was a little bit nervous because in fitting my mock-up, I did in the end make pretty much all the changes that I was gonna make to the pattern to the mock-up, but 
they might have not been as precise as maybe they should have been, so I was a little bit worried that the alterations that I made to the pattern would end up being not exactly perfect or I did a little bit too much, but it looks really good. Closes pretty much perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and sew the side seams. For lining fabric, I'm using this red synthetic lining that kind of goes with this. I was really confused about what order I need to sew the collar and the outside collar and the facings on the lapels, but I, I just got this wonderful book called Vintage Couture Tailoring um, in the mail, which is super helpful. So what I've done is trimmed the bottom where the collar meets the neck and I'm gonna press it up and then I'm gonna do that cross stitching that I did on the lapel, which I have not done here yet. So I'm gonna press this up and then I'm gonna cross stitch this seam allowance to the canvas and then when it ends which i think is here i have to double check i will continue cross stitching but just the same without the edge pressed i'm trying not to cut all the way to the edge because i want to make sure that this edge stays intact because it will be visible I have my under collar all cross stitched, as you can see here, this entire edge, and then this part is folded under. Lay the under collar and the outer collar right sides together. I'm gonna stitch here, here, and here on the machine. According to this book, the seam allowance gets basted to the under collar side, which is effectively edge stitching, if you've ever done that. This section fell down to the under collar and then this side is not yet um, and I wanted to see like how effective this is and what it does like compared to having just plain seam allowance so I flipped it right side out and it actually does work really well and look really good um, and prevent this from like just kind of scrunching up or being at a weird angle so yeah this is actually really effective I started, I started pressing the curve back into this because I did press it flat to do some of the stitching. I also looked at the center back line and folded it on that center seam to make sure that it was symmetrical and one side was slightly longer than the other side so I kind of just set my iron here and just like pulled on this and slowly kind of stretched it out so that it would be symmetrical. One thing that I've learned is that tailors do a lot of manipulation with the iron and there are a lot of seams that you can really ease in with ironing by pressing either the fibers farther apart or pressing them closer together. So pretty much all things can be judged with pressing into a shape that you want them to be. I'm going to press back in this collar curve. So it looks like before the collar goes on, you sew the lapel, but only to the point where the collar can kind of encase and cover this little poking up seam. So I need to figure out where this where this line is so that I can sew the lapel to that point. So I've put my um, outer shell onto the dress form and then now I think what I do is I take the under collar side, line up the center back seams, and then this gets basted onto the shell. That is my current understanding. Basting is amazing because you can do stuff like this and make sure that the points that need to line up are lining up. You will not regret it. I promise. It might take forever, but it will be so worth it. Collar is basted on just the 
under collar is basted on to the shell and then I've clipped my lapel facings right sides together and I'm going to sew them right sides together here and then stopping just before the collar. this so that there is no under fabric on each side when it's supposed to be on top so for the lapel I'm pressing it so that the facing shows more and then I'm switching here to having the outer fabric show more. I mean just look at it. That is so cool. I just wanted to quickly mention that right here in the outer collar, the part that's technically inside, you need to cut extra seam allowance on this. I made the mistake of not doing that, so in this seam line right here that I've just basted, um, there is a scary small amount of seam allowance here. There's like an eighth of an inch right here, which is not ideal. So yeah, if you're doing this, I would suggest cutting your outer collar bigger than you need it so that you can then trim it down because I did not account for it having to shape over. I'm not going to show you because it's pressed and basted and I want it to stay that way, but don't do what I did and end up with no fabric in that seam allowance. Okay, so to show you what I did on the other side, this side has more seam allowance. I have maybe 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance here, so definitely enough to work with. First I took the facing part that I hadn't sewn down yet and I just folded it along the seam line and pressed it down. I will do that now. Okay, so then this part. I'm just folding this under the same way on the seam line, which I have marked here with Taylor's Tacks. And I'm going to press this as I go because it's a tight curve. And you have to remember, it does need a little bit more ease on this side. Um, I had to push it on the other side and just kind of deal with it, like stretch the fabric out with pressing. But here I think I'm going to aim to give it the room that it actually needs. long basting needle. I'm just going across these two and then I'm going to do it again to secure it. I feel like I should be basting both sides individually but I'm just going to do this and then stitch over it and then pull out my basting stitches and say that that's fine. Waxed cotton thread thimble that doesn't fit. Don't recommend this part, get one that does fit. And I think I'm starting on the outside and do what looks like, it looks like they do kind of tiny little whip stitches. Which is why I'm starting on the inside so I can figure out what I'm doing and how to make it look invisible before I do it on the part that everyone will see. guys a better look at the seam here. This is my thumb. So I'm at about 11 or 12 stitches per inch. I'm hoping that that is good enough. Just finished doing the back neck seam. We got all the way to here and I'm thinking of just continuing to use the same thread and sew up here. These stitches are about 12 stitches per inch and about one to two threads on each side. Behold, we have a collar and a lapel. Gorgeous lapel roll. A hand sewn seam between the lapel and the collar. Now I'm going around the edge with a pick stitch, which is essentially a small spaced out back stitch. a little close-up of my pick stitching so far. It just kind of compresses this edge, makes sure it doesn't kind of like do this. 
all of the seam allowances on the outer shell and the lining get clipped and pressed and now this is all going to get filled into place. Now I'm filling the lining in by hand. Um, I'm doing about 8 or 9 stitches per inch. I was wondering if I would have severe regret about not basting this first and just pinning it, but I've found that I can arrange it so that my thread does not get caught on the pins, which is one of the biggest downfalls of pins. It does, this is not great, um, the pins distort the fabric. I didn't get footage of it before, but I basted the seam allowance of the armholes down to the inside before setting the lining in just to make it easier. I didn't find any buttons in my stash that matched this fabric, so I decided to make some covered buttons. And then I'm just doing a running stitch. And then you pull. Oops. I'm doing five buttons all two and a quarter inches apart down the front. I'm doing the buttonholes by hand in green silk twist. It's not a perfect match to my fabric, but it is the best I had on hand. I also chose to do more of a keyhole shape just to accommodate the larger shank of the buttons that I covered myself. So it's all done. This is how it came out. Things I would do differently, um, the top collar is, the piece of fabric is like too tightly over the under collar. Um, so it works because there's all this shaping in here and it's stiff enough, but doing this again I would definitely cut a lot more room in the top collar because there's like a little bit of fabric bubbling under here you can feel um, because the top collar is just like stretched as far as it can go to fit this shape. Also, these covered buttons, I sort of tried to pattern match them, so, as you can see... They look super cute! So, yeah, that is the end of this video. I hope you learned something, and if you're trying to make this yourself, I hope that my video was helpful. Bye, humans!